Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. Today, we are going to get to know author Ernie Lewitt and his book is Pine Bugs and 303s. It was published by Latitude 46. Ernie Lewitt is a retired soldier and police officer, multi-award winning author, speaker and change maker who lives in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Ernie. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I am thrilled to have you and I'm looking forward to getting to know you. Are you ready for some quick questions? Absolutely. All righty. Ernie, when are you most creative? Uh, in the bush. Uh, generally when, I, when um, I'm home or on, uh, ba or back where I grew up, Northern Ontario, or on, in, or on my back deck. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just when I'm outside or, or close to being outside. <laughs> um, would you describe yourself as a pessimist or an optimist? Oh, optimist. And why? Uh, we live in the best country in the world. Uh, we, uh, we, yeah, we live in the best country in the world. Like, I, I can't, uh, there's, there's negative things that happen in our country, but overall, I mean, uh, we have one of the safest, uh, most stable societies I've ever, ever seen. And I, when I was overseas and, uh, like even, uh, in Cyprus, uh, there's, there's so many different standards of living that people accept that uh, you, you can't help to be an optimist if you're a Canadian. So one of the tools in your toolbox is empathy. Why is empathy so important, Ernie? If you could, if you could take a minute, you don't have to agree with people all the time, but if you could take a minute to look at things from their perspective and their experience and, and be empathetic uh, to why uh, they are the way they are, uh, I think you pretty much navigate around it. it's just about anything that life puts up for you. Now, Ernie, you have been referred to as a change maker, which is such a great way of, of being referred to. What are you trying to change? You know, it, it just happened organically uh, with me. Like things that I thought were like an injustice. I, I wouldn't soapbox it at all. I would just work through it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it just it just kind of wear people down. <laughs> Excuse me. Until <laughs> uh, till a change occurs, and sometimes it's it's uh, subconscious when it happens. And sometimes it's obvious to them that they've been changed, whether they like it or not. Uh, and so, yeah, you just wear them down. I, uh, you know. It's, there's so many different uh, stereotypes when I was growing up and, and I would just basically, like I said, wear people down and all of a sudden I'm not going away. And yes, I'm, what I'm doing here is, is right. Or it's going to, it seems to be right to me. And eventually you'll come to see it as right. If, if, uh, as well, <laughs> if that makes sense, that sounds kind of arrogant, but uh, yeah, I just wear you down. Yeah. <laughs> You're passionate. <laughs> yes. Now, um, when you were 17 years old, you decided to join the armed forces. What made you decide to join the armed forces? I, I think I always knew at some level I wanted to be a soldier. Uh, when I was a kid, I was constantly there. Every stick was a gun and every rock was a grenade. And, you know, when you're, you're, you, when you're moving through the bush, even when you were hunting, when I was uh, young, I used to think about, yeah, this is me moving through uh, the forest, looking for the enemy type stuff. And, uh, so I think I always knew. And then once I knew my grandfather had been killed in the war, uh, I think that kind of cemented it. And I quit school when I was 15 and I was working on the rally and uh, just, you know, kind of a typical Northern Ontario party kid. I hair down to my waist and uh, and then we're, we're, I was in North Bay, Ontario, when I decided to, uh, to walk into a recruiting center and, and join the army, which absolutely changed my life. And when you say it changed your life, how so, Ernie? Uh, it gave lots of purpose. Uh, it gave me lots of discipline. And uh, 
you know, at, at first, you know, it's, it's an adventure for a kid from the bush. Cause I basically, I grew up in Oban and, and never really lived in a city or anything like that. And, uh, when, uh, once I joined the army and we got based in Winnipeg for a while. So it actually was in a, in a city and it just opened my eyes up so much, so much. And the discipline was the, the big one though, for me, uh, you know, it, it gave you the passion and drive to finish what you started all the time as opposed to, you know, trying it and quitting and trying and quitting. I already quit school once. So that was uh, enough quitting for me. So. And what prompted you to be a writer? Uh, well, I love to read. I absolutely love to read. And that passion came from my mother, actually. My mom used to, because uh, we were, we weren't financially very well off when we were young. Uh, but my mom always seemed to find books. She always seemed to find books and she'd leave them around and tell us not to read them, right? Leave those things alone. <laughs> you know, they're not for you. I remember reading Helter Skelter when I was like 12. <laughs> it's just, and but my mom used to, she like, yeah, she just found books. She used to go up to the, uh the uh the bush camp the lumber camp and uh when guys threw the paperbacks away and, and bring them back and so there was always books in my house so i had a, a love and passion in reading from and i knew i knew that someday i wanted to write uh, and uh and then once i started well actually i wrote I, I wrote a bit when i was in cyprus but i look back on it now like 35 years later and I go that was that there was that wasn't very good <laughs> <laughs> you know it was because yeah, I think we're back then you know you're typical young soldiers so you, you you're you know you're thinking in black and white terms a lot of times and you know and and uh you weren't uh or, or I wasn't uh let's see I was part of that military subculture you know what I mean like Everybody was, uh, if you weren't a soldier, you were a civilian, and civilians were, were just in the way. <laughs> so, but when, uh, when, I, when, I start, when I started writing uh, nonfiction, then I knew I was going to, that inevitably fiction would follow. But I wanted to do the nonfiction part and get that. It was, uh, the Zulus had a term for it, it was like washing your spears. So after a battle, the Zulus would wash the spears to, uh, to release any bad energy that that had uh, had came from being in battle. So at the end of my police career, um, and, and for years I would never admit this, and uh, but eventually through my writing I did. I had post traumatic stress, really bad, and uh, it was a journey to navigate through that. And writing nonfiction allowed me to do that. Right, so I so I got to do the, the nonfiction and even talk about post traumatic stress in each of the three nonfiction books. I put a chapter to each one, and at each one, I, I was being more honest as I went by, right? As because the way I used to deal with trauma as a cop, it, it was I would it was giving the next call. Like no matter how tra traumatic something you were was that you were at, you went immediately to something else. Yeah. Right, and 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 you never took the time to reflect, and never took the time to to decompress and uh and back in my generation was uh you know it, it was a sign of weakness to, to ask for help right and uh and it seems funny to say that now but you know quite honestly i'm 62 years old so i got i got a few generations on, on a lot of people right uh and uh, when i grew up in northern ontario uh we were always 20 years behind southern ontario in, in attitudes and and uh you know, in modern, like just, yeah, attitudes, education, all that stuff. Because Northern Ontario was always just kind of the afterthought for, for Queen's Park. So I grew up in a generation where, like, my mom, uh, if I got in a fight and I lost, she sent me back out again, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, you know, it's so, uh, yeah, just a totally different different uh, mindset. Uh, but once the non once I wrote the nonfiction, that's when the... the and I thought, yeah, it's it's time for me to write a fiction book, and and, uh, and I and I went at it with like absolute joy when I started doing it because uh, I I was on the train taking the train took the train uh, back to Oba uh, a lot when uh, over the years, and I was on the train and uh, and I was you know just what you know the train's motion it's a, it's trains are great uh, just uh, if you're um, just don't be in a hurry to get there. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, I was on the train and I was looking out the, the windows and I was getting close to Oba, we were a couple hundred miles from Oba. And uh, all of a sudden this idea came out of my head. It's, I'm, I'm going to, enough talking about it, I'm going to write this book. And I started, that's uh, when I started Pine Bugs in Zero Three. Well, that's that's wonderful. How wonderful that you've been able to use your writing to work through post-traumatic stress. That's a, that's an incredible journey that you've been on. Just incredible. Yeah. And just uh, and not admitting it, that was the biggest thing for years, right? Mm -hmm. But my wife knew. I mean, I, but when <laughs> a lot of people I worked with, though, when the, my first book came out, uh, they said we had no idea. Yeah. And I said, yeah. but there was times where. I'd been hyperventilating before going in on a search warrant, um, but I was by myself, right, in the car, and I just yeah. go like, oh, holy shit, holy shit, like my heart would just be pounding, but then when it's time to go, when it's go time, then you were back to normal, right? like, give me the next call type of that, oh that, that attitude, so. My goodness. How are you doing now, Ernie? Are you feeling better? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, is, I'll, be, I'll be retired now for, from policing for, this will be my 10th year in November. 